Corn Warriors is presented by Pivot Bio. And last but not least, if you want your corn knee high by July, better get the plant, boys. Tonight on Corn Warriors, we're headed back to Chesapeake, Virginia to check in with Heath Gutrell. Then it's out west to Sutton, Nebraska, where we're going to check in with the auctions. Keith is right in the thick of mid-season management and finishing up weed harvest. Then it's on to aerial application on pin. Get ready to get up close and personal with some airplanes in this episode. Then Heath's going to show us his crops and make some predictions on what he's facing come fall. Levi and Jenna are back in the field in this episode. They're checking to see how their Pivot Bio Proven 40 has done with their representative, Tammy Odd. Then we'll get an update on how the crop has done since the extensive wind damage from episode six. So sit back, relax, grab your favorite bowl of corn, and enjoy some exciting educational entertainment with Corn Warriors season six. So these are going to be the non-pivot bio. Last time there was a pretty good visual difference, so. Crazy enough, we've seven inches of uh, irrigation on here, and I mean, you can see that there's moisture here, but I mean, it's dry. I mean, the pivots just runs constantly, so. What's kind of interesting, Levi, too, is the 36 inch rows. Yeah. You know, but look at, uh, you know, do you think that's contributing some to sunlight down uh, here? You know, I don't know. Um, this is all I've ever had, I guess. Um, you obviously want your leaves to stay green the all the way down. Um, same size! But uh, it's cost too much to change. <laughs> and uh, uh, we've always, we've had go really good yields, so until, you know, I mean, someday maybe, but they're easier to walk down and pretty easy to drive a sprayer down the rows. But uh, yeah, we do get a lot of sunlight in the canopy. However, as I push population, my plants get tight. You getting another one, Stetson? We're, Tiny. It's early harvest here. <laughs> Remind me not to pull the NCGA thing out here. You know, there's several plants. Here's another one that's got two nice, I mean, and this is untreated. Yeah. Wait till we get over there. Yeah, that's in the middle of the field. That's a legit deal. Things are really rolling along here. untreated this is the treated just by looking at it with the naked eye you can tell that there's more mass in the treated for sure which is what we like to see so in theory it's getting the nitrogen that it needs and it's getting more sunlight and that hopefully the crop has better yield potential so in a lot of these fields we've been seeing you know sometimes a stage a stage and a half ahead uh, when it comes to growth staging these plants and here I think you can see you know obviously we're in the reproductive stages but um, your fill is just a little bit further along it looks like in the treated yeah yeah the silks are darker yeah honestly this is probably one of the I'm not gonna say the worst fertility but this is the newest field to me so I've farmed it the least to the amount of years so well, it was corn for how many years prior to us taking 20 over? some years 20 straight. some years of straight corn i didn't have it picked in the beginning to be my contest field <laughs> if it doesn't get more damage it'll be good corn no doubt for it, sure it's good looking yeah that's been the season i feel like every time farmers are talking it's like well as long as we don't get more damage as long as it doesn't get windy again as long as it doesn't hail again this is actually just what the pivot bio is doing for us so all this whole quarter of corn has been wide dropped, fertigated, everything, treated the same. And so this is just above and beyond. I mean, um, it's a pretty intense um, nitrogen program here already. And this is just, this is what it can do on top of that. So, you know, a lot of people say, oh, I put it on multiple times, I don't need it. Well, this is kind of showing me otherwise, you know, that I think there's still, still room for improvement. So we're gonna take a weight of each plant and then we'll also take four chlorophyll readings um, on each leaf of each of these plants. 
We'll put that information into you know, our algorithm and then we'll be able to tell chlorophyll concentration, biomass differences, and then an overall nitrogen performance index. We can, I can probably handle this, Levi, if you want to go get the pivot check, check just for the sake quick. of time. Just Sounds good. So we're just checking the dripper oil on the gear head here. Um, just pretty much keeps everything work, working smoothly so the bearings don't go out and stuff. So. So right now we just loaded up Pivot Bio. The Proven 40 product, mm -hmm. which is very cool. We're out looking at one of our Pivot Bio plots. I like the looks of it. It's not leaching away in the groundwater. It's not running off when we get a hard, heavy rain. Not bad, huh? Not bad. The Proven 40 is doing its job. It's that missing link that keeps my plant where it needs to be. Pivot Bio passed the test. So I feel far, like. the Pivot Bio is checking all the boxes. Yeah. All kinds of people here and there, uh, up and down the road, that uh, either they're burning up or they're flooded out. Yeah. But uh, all in all, I think it's been a, a decent year so far. Crop looks good, considering it's starting to roll now, but this 100 degree heat today is gonna take a toll on that. But hopefully it'll cool off tomorrow. Well, you, damn if you do, damn if you don't. Don't need the rain on the wheat, but we need it on the corn and the beans the that are up. Yeah. tissue test results that come back for this farm, it come back spot on in every category. It was nothing deficient in this farm. It needs a little shot of water this morning. My dad and uncle farmed their whole lives. They farmed about 1,200 acres. And with really no room for me, you know what I mean? And so I, uh, I started on my own. So really, I'm kind of like a first generation because I started everything that I got by myself. And then really, when they retired, I just picked up some land, you know? It's been a little over 20 years now. No, I worked with my dad and them, like I said, but you know, there was not enough acreage to keep me there. So I went to work for a few other farmers in the area. I learned a lot from them guys. The last farmer I worked for, I asked them for a raise. I was making $250 a week. For, I never forget it, he had just bought a brand new combine. He, I, I climbed in the combine, it was, we were picking soybeans, and I asked them, for a raise, and he he told me, he said, uh, well, how much do you want? And I said, like $50 more a week, that would really help me out. And he said, uh, Heath, you're making as much money as you're ever gonna make with me right now. I said, but when you get done with soybeans, I'm gonna, you know, try to find something else to do. And before I could shut the door, he told me, looked at me saying, good luck. I took that kind of hard. Anyways, long story short, within an hour, I had talked to a good friend of mine who owned some tractor trailers that hauled demolition, like you tear down a house, he would haul it away. So I got into that. I bought some tractor trailers and started hauling demolition. It was five or seven years, I can't remember, I did that. And eventually uh, saved up enough money to buy my first tractor. 
planter, plows, rented my first farm, and then from there just kind of it exploded. 20 years now, I mean, farm about 5,000 acres. I enjoy corn. I mean, I, I enjoy watching corn grow. Everything about corn I enjoy, unless, you know, there's some sort of disaster, obviously. We had to pick, you know, down corn where Hurricane had got it. When I say down corn, I mean like, it looks like you pulled a roller over top of it. I found some stink bugs this morning. I think it's time, yeah. It's early to be spraying for stink bugs, but there's enough of them to do it. Plus I got some chemicals I want to try to put on it. And Okay, so you can jump right on it as soon as I let you know. Okay, fair enough, thank you. Now, I always tell people, I try to be very humble with farming because just in minutes it can be taken from you. You know, I joke around in the field when I was, well not all that was a joke for me, but on a real on a real note, you know, you better be humble when it comes to farming because it can certainly be taken from you in 30 seconds. Next, probably will be a V10 Valtima application. It's so much more than fungicide. It goes above and beyond disease control. Really like the BASF fungicides. It's a stress mitigator. It's plant health. We have applied a toad on this farm, you know. Done a great job for me. Definitely money made. Yeah, absolutely. Money. See how green this still is? That's right. It's never too early to be talking about a program anymore. Corn Warriors is presented by Pivot Bio. Yes, so this is not very scientific, um, but our equipment that we can use in the field is a bucket and a hanging scale. Um, obviously our plants are really tall at this stage, so we're gonna break them down so that we get all of the leaf material inside of that bucket. I know sustainability is a very important thing mm -hmm. for you and your farm and the oh, longevity. Yeah. Um, Absolutely. Of what you're preserving. And so sustainability means a lot of different things to a lot of different people, but to have a product that works on your farm, um, mm -hmm. it does what, you know, those microbes do what they say they're going to do, but then also a product that's good for the environment. Um, you know, it's not leaching, it's not going anywhere. Right, that's huge. Thirty-two point seven. I would say in this area, somebody gets hail within a 50 mile, mile radius around here every year. Whether, you know, it's kind of Russian roulette really. Usually hail is not such a big area. Maybe it'll hit, you know, six hundred or thousand acres here or there. But this year, I mean, it was like thousands and thousands of acres at a, at a, at a spot. Now wind. You're gonna get wind here every year. I mean, we we already had the, you know, 90 plus mile an hour winds, and I mean, like, I think the last five growing seasons we've had 85 plus mile an hour winds every year. So that's just something you kind of have to get ready for, <laughs> I guess. I've lucked out on this field. This field, yes, it probably blew 85 or so here, but the corn was small enough. It was, it didn't green snap it, which is good. Um, this is the only farm that I have that did not receive uh, significant damage. Um, so that's good. Um, however, it kind of shortens the book for contest fields when, you know, uh, 12 other ones do get hit. So, <laughs> but that's okay. Um, it does look good. Um, and we're fortunate the damage that we did have has been between 10 to 25 percent damage you know so it's not like we're 50 60 70 percent you know so we we're very thankful for that and you know we're going to stay positive and it always could be worse so 
You're not necessarily picking up the phone and calling the insurance guy. Well, my, my dad, me and my dad are the insurance guys. So. <laughs> Grandma's gonna get here at like 4.30. Will you be done by then or do you need to get more stuff done? It's okay if you do. I, I won't be done by 4.30, no. Okay. So my grandma's coming. She has been involved in agriculture her whole life. She grew up on a farm. She just turned 95 last week and she's sharp as a tack. She's the best. She has witnessed agriculture from, like she has memories and stories about planting and harvesting with hand and horseback. So she's witnessed that part of agriculture and then she's also sat in her living room and looked outside and watched these combines, massive combines drive themselves. So she, the advancements that she's witnessed in her, life, her lifespan is incredible. It's crazy to think that one person can have witnessed all of those changes in agriculture. So now that we put in all the chlorophyll concentrations and the biomass, um, the results that we have are 15.6% more biomass mm -hmm. in the proven 40 treated plants, which, you know, we saw some differences in overall height. We yes. saw differences in stock diameter of those plants and maybe- Even in moisture, right? When exactly. You were them? Yeah. yeah, so not a surprise there. Um, with the chlorophyll readings, we did show a 22.7% difference um, in those readings with the Proven 40 plants versus, uh, you know, what we're calling the untreated plants. Right. So we know that chlorophyll has that direct correlation to nitrogen. So with those two things together, we had 24.2% more nitrogen uh, in the Proven 40 plants. And that converted to 14.2 pounds, correct? Yes. So, so the pivot, it. yes. the. Pivot Bio treated, had, the Proven 40 treated, excuse me, had 14.2 pounds more per acre than the untreated. Yes, we did. I feel like, I mean, numbers don't lie, right? Yeah, <laughs> no, we did the test. The microbes the field. are doing their job, and yes, it's good to see this as the farmer that that big investment we made, it's working. Now it's exciting to see what'll come harvest. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Nutrient 8 stand behind me 100%. Benton and me work together. He's my go-to guy. We've probably known each other, what, uh, 10 years at least. You pick the phone up and they're there immediately and I can't put another name on anybody else I'd rather work with. Plants look very healthy. Yeah, sometimes we put secret sauce in it. <laughs> we actually become a real good team. Only the best products from Nutrient for us. Farmers deserve a nitrogen that works as hard as they do. One that stays with the crop until the job is done. It's time to turn to a better nitrogen with Pivot Bio. All right, well, we're back to Chesapeake, Virginia, northeastern North Carolina. Uh, we're putting down some fungicide some bifentrin, insecticide, and some DeLauro, and actually spraying out some of David Hewlett's cryptomite. It's a pretty day out here today. Uh, we'll try to get all of our corn sprayed today. We got running two airplanes. They're getting it done pretty quick, so we got Matt coming in now with one of the airplanes. Looks like he's coming in hot, too, the way I like it. Ugh, hot! Let's talk about how pretty the damn corn is. The corn is very pretty, considering how much drought we've been having. The corn's holding up really well. 400 bushel corn, right? <laughs> After I finish. <laughs> Mike, make sure he's going to have enough time to finish the weekday out there by 10. All right, let's go look at some coal. So we're here in Chesapeake. We're looking at one of my farms that's on some really high clay ground. Uh, Y'all, you guys were here when uh, we planted it. Uh, lots of knots and clay. 
But as you can see, I mean, it turned out to be some nice looking corn, uh, high production corn. It's not gonna be any yield winning corn, I don't believe, but um, it's, it's pretty, it's healthy. Some of these have got two ears on it. Of course, this little sucker here ain't gonna be much, but uh, I'm happy with the way things are looking out here. We actually went through some pretty high heat and drought conditions this year. Some of our farms, you know, won't make nearly what they should have, but uh, things could obviously be a lot worse. Anyways, I believe uh, this corn, you know, may pick upper 200s, maybe 300 if we're lucky, maybe 250, who knows, but all in all, after being so dry for so long, um, I'm actually happy with the way things look. Uh, and I'll actually uh, lean credit towards, we, we pull rippers out here uh, to give that root somewhere to go down and look for some moisture. Uh, some people don't do it, I've always done it, and seems to work good for me. So that's, that's, what, that's where we're at right now. I'm happy with the way things look. Um, we'll see what happens in a few months when the combines roll in here. About two years ago, we had uh, substantial amounts of rain. I think my overall average across the, the whole board was like 173. I think this corn here on this farm averaged about 130-ish. Pretty rough year that year, which last year, you know, we couldn't have done a better job. Uh, everything just fell in place. Uh, this particular farm last year ended up averaging, uh, two, I believe it was 236. Again, I think this corn actually looks as good as it did last year. I'm hoping a little bit better. It is what it is as they say in 2020. So we're gonna go ahead and pull the ear off just to kinda look at what we're, uh, what we're working with this year. Pollinated well, not much tip back. Again, back to the weather situation, I was expecting a lot worse than actually what I had been pulling back and looking at. I was actually a little nervous to actually pull any back and look at it, but all in all, seems to be fine. I do have a farm down south that went through a pretty severe drought. Um, I don't think it's gonna make nearly what this corn's gonna make. It's gonna be uh, probably in the hundreds range. Uh, we just didn't get any rain uh, south of here, a few miles, well, 15 miles from here. Uh, but that's farming. Coming up next on Cornworks.